Hi everyone and welcome to the MIM Virtual Expo 2019. My name's Paul Jocelyn and I'm going to run a couple of short bite-sized sessions with you uh, as part of the expo, exploring a couple of key leadership capability topics. I'll also be involved in the broader MIM leadership development program and I'm sure the two topics that we'll cover as part of the expo will definitely look at again as part of that wider programme. So it's great to make an introduction and for us to start to spend some time together on these themes. So today we're going to reflect on your role as major incident managers, as change managers. And as I think about the work that you're responsible for, my reflection is it's very much as you as a broker in your organization. And by that, I mean much of your work is dependent on your ability and your confidence to connect with different individuals and different groups, both within the IT team, of course, but more importantly, you could argue across your organization more broadly that you're seeking to serve. So this idea of you as a broker identifying and then bridging silos, identifying opportunities to improve connections and collaboration, I think is really important from a leadership perspective. Also, I think an interesting reflection for me is the need for you to be constantly looking for new ideas and new solutions, both internally across the organization, but also outside. And to support that, the idea of developing really diverse perspectives. Where could new solutions and new opportunities come from? How can you get out of your own head, as it were, and really consider where inspiration and ideas might come from next? And I think the final piece in this idea of you as a major incident manager, as a broker, is the challenge, of course, to be managing lots of different things at the same time. So the idea of having these simultaneous challenges and stakeholders and priorities that you're expected to keep in sync and keep on track. So I think an interesting way into your work as a leader is for us to think today about the idea of psychological safety. So how can you as a team leader and then as a broader leader within the organisation create the environment, create the conditions for change to happen effectively. And I'd reflect on that in three ways, which I think all link through to this idea of creating psychological safety. Firstly, how can you create context for your team and with your team? How do you frame the challenge that you're looking to resolve? Secondly, how can you build better connections within your team, across the IT organisation, and again, the broader business that you seek to serve? And thirdly, from a change leadership perspective, how can you facilitate and role model faster learning for your team and again with the rest of the business? So I think those three things, those three themes are really interesting in the context of you leading change. So you'll get lots of support, of course, through the Expo from a technical perspective in terms of process management, tools and techniques. What we're going to start to explore here, of course, is how do you balance that as a confident, capable leader of change to really realise the benefit of your great technical capability and confidence. So again, psychological safety, a really important platform for that change. So if we start to think about those three things that I mentioned, context, connections, and faster learning. The first piece I think is how do you currently set the stage? How do you empathize the purpose of your team? How do you identify what's at stake with your stakeholders? How do you describe and define and really articulate why it matters and to whom it matters? 
how do you set expectations around what might be possible, where the challenges are, what uncertainties face you as a team, and what interdependencies you have? How do you create the expectation and the understanding that you're not going to deliver the right responses on your own, of course? How do you create an expectation where it's clear that you welcome on your open to other voices? The business is looking to you to lead in these high pressure situations, but how have you in that and also in between those times created that expectation of this is a two way process? And so what are the benefits of framing the work, the benefits of setting the stage? Well, of course, you create a really joined up, consistent, shared expectation of the outcome that you're trying to create together. You're not simply seen as a reactive force. You're not simply seen as a team or an individual that's called on only as and when needed. You've created a more joined up, compelling vision together and an expectation that you've helped people to buy into so that when it matters most, you've got that to rely on. So really important, this idea of setting context and a clear joined up expectation and a vision that you've built together with the right people upon which you're going to depend. Secondly, this idea of, from a leadership change perspective, how do you create better connections. So how do you invite as a leader better participation with you as an individual and with your team who are seen to be critical to making good choices and making the right outcomes happen for customers and stakeholders, of course. So inviting participation. So again, what might that look like? What responsibility is on you as a leader? What are some of the things that you can start to think about to create that environment? So humility, how do you demonstrate humility? How do you interact with people that makes it clear that you acknowledge your own gaps, you acknowledge your own challenges, and that you're comfortable and open to feedback and to be working collaboratively to start to address some of those. How can you, in the context of better connections, role model inquiry? How can you simply ask good questions and better questions of yourself, of your own team, and more broadly to the rest of the organisation? And it's very difficult, in my experience, in many organisations, to ask the tough question. It's rare that people are rewarded for asking difficult questions. They're normally rewarded for solving urgent problems. So the skill of inquiry and the skill of investing in good questions and ever better questions is really important as you think about building relationships as a key part of creating a psychologically safe environment as a change leader. And then the flip of asking questions, of course, is how do you role model intense listening? So given the context and the challenges and the pace of the issues that you're being asked to deal with, your listening skills, the intensity of your listening skills are absolutely crucial. If you think again about how are you going to create relationships, how are you going to build deeper and more trust-based connections. And what's the benefit, again, of that approach from a change perspective for you as a leader? Well, the idea that other voices are welcome, other ideas are welcome. This is a relationship-based role. This is work that's interdependent is really important. The idea that even though you're looked at in a very specific field with specific expectations of your knowledge and your expertise, you're setting yourself up as a leader to be wholly collaborative and to be about connections at the core. 
So the third piece I think is really interesting. If we consider how do we set context? How do we align around a vision? How do we ensure there's a consistent expectation? The first piece. How do we build relationships and put connections and questions and listening at the centre of our approach, at the centre of our style as change leaders? Thirdly, how do we go and make good things happen as a result of all of that investment in context and connections? Of course, how does it start to impact better work and better outcomes for our stakeholders, for our customers? And I think this is all about faster learning and responding to the way that we're starting to organize ourselves as change leaders. And there's some interesting tools and techniques that we can consider here under that response piece. Expressing appreciation is a really obvious point in terms of our style and the way that we interact and the way that we continue to build on those relationships. Listening, which we've talked about, acknowledging and thanking. Again, how could we as change leaders really role model that? How could we bring that into those interactions? The acknowledgement, the thank you, the real gratitude for tough, tense situations where we've asked a lot of colleagues and teams elsewhere in the business. I think another part here is de-stigmatizing failure. So the nature of the work is not simple and it's not black and white. Giving our teams opportunity to test and to learn as they go, encouraging people to look forward, offering help, reflection, the ability to look back and learn from our experiences, the nature of the work really lends itself to this capability and to this mindset. So the idea that if we can take some of the stigma away from failure, and we don't look at it in such a binary way. Again, we can build more confidence and more connection. And what's the outcome of faster learning? Well, this orientation towards looking forward, the orientation towards a growth mindset, an orientation towards always looking to progress being seen as a part of the IT organization and the broader organization that's always pushing forward, I think is a really interesting opportunity. So let's just recap. We've talked about change leadership and in that context, creating psychological safety, creating the kind of teams that feel like they're empowered to make change happen on behalf of the organization. We've talked about the three elements of that, three areas that you as leaders can really reflect on. Do I set context? Do I join the dots for my team and my broader stakeholders so that we get to a clear aligned vision? Do I set expectation and meaning for the work we need to do together? Secondly, we talked about connections and hopefully some reflections and some actionable things in there. How do you think about inviting better participation? How do you create two-way dialogue? How do you do that through asking better questions? How do you role model listening as a change leader? And then thirdly, how do you respond? How do you respond productively? How do you take that and always look to make change happen. Thinking about destigmatizing failure, thinking about the opportunity to offer help and look forward. So I think that leads nicely into the second video, which I hope you'll join around from a leadership perspective, from a change perspective, what are some of the simple things that you can do as a leader? What are the things that you can role model? What are some practical tips that you could put in place within your team that starts to foster and accelerate that idea of a continuously learning team. I think that's really, really important 
in the nature of your work. I'd love to hear your questions and reflections. Please feel free to get in touch with me via the MIM leadership team. I look forward to you joining me again on the second video where we'll talk about continuous learning culture and also going forward as you interact with the leadership program as part of the broader MIM offer. Thank you again for your time today and I hope you enjoy the rest of the virtual conference this year. Thank you.